What's up guys, Sean back with another video and today we got Shauna. Why? Because she stole my name and put an A on the end of it. And that's enough for me to want to make one of these. But anyways, if you guys leave comments, let me know which one of these I should do next. I appreciate it because, I mean, there's a million of them. I don't know which one to pick. I kind of just go with the flow. Whatever I see that day or whatever somebody commented last is probably the one I'm going to pick. So uh, let's see what Shauna's up to in this one. So, what is with that? Oh, I don't know. You want to kid yourself with the food? Be my guest. He's not lying. Damn. You were working fast. I'm telling you, the producers for My 600 Pound Life have to sit there and say, all right, first shot, we need you locked and loaded. Get that thing out, get it greased up, whatever you gotta do, we wanna see some coochie cam. That's just gotta be the way they operate. There's no other way. Every day of my life feels like it's harder than the last. And that thing is just keep getting worse for me because of my size. And I'm so tired of it and all the pain. I don't want to live this way because I hate this body. It's just too big to be normal. Yeah, but you're the one that has the option to change it. That swelling in your legs has to hurt like hell. And I know because the front of my shin has touched the top of my foot before. It hurts a lot. And it keeps me from being able to do a lot. So I feel like I'm trapped most of the time because of how hard it is to move and get around. It's hard to walk. It's hard to be able to stand for more than like two minutes at a time. I think that time gets less as I get bigger and it hurts quicker. So I'm losing my ability to move and do things. And that really- Oh, in that trailer they're in, they made that toilet in a very bad way for 600 pound people. She could get wedged in that damn little hallway. That corridor is not fat friendly, so forget breaking the toilet, you're gonna fall through the damn wall. It upsets me because I don't want to lose my independence. I can at least still clean myself. My mom hired a friend of mine, Derekus, to be my caretaker because I live with her, but she travels most of the year. So Derekus is there to help me do a lot while she's gone. But I don't want him to ever have to help me with this or ask anyone to do that for me but it's already almost too hard for me to do all the time. So sometimes I think about just not doing it, but then when you're big like me and have all these folds, you chafe a lot. And then you get blisters and sores and that can get infected easily. Oh yeah, you're gonna end up with crazy rashes if you don't wash like every day or other day, but she's in that little small shower and she can't even close the curtain. So she's gotta be getting water everywhere. Also, if you don't dry properly, you're gonna smell like a wet dog. That's just how it works. So I push myself to just do it and get it over with. But I still can't really do it well and get to all the areas where I had to be careful about with all the sores and stuff. Ow. So I know it's getting to a dangerous place with me. And I hate it. I hate how my life is, but I mostly just hate my body. I hate my body more than anything in the whole world. I feel like a monster just walking around. My legs and my feet disgust me the most about my body. They don't even seem human anymore. None of me do. I still don't like my legs, but that's just because mine used to swell like that. So there's like some kind of like loose skin going on down there. But it doesn't mean that I don't like myself any less. It's just something that shows that I've been 600 pounds. You can absolutely change that. You've got all the time in the world. You're still super young. So, thinking you're a monster or seeing a monster when you look in the mirror is probably the hardest part with being that big. Because you're always going to be down on yourself, but you have the option to change it. The only hole you can't dig yourself out of is the grave. And you're working towards that at that size, so you better get a move on. So, I don't even want to look at myself at all anymore. Because I'm embarrassed of what I've done to myself in my life. I'm 22 years old. I should be like... 
and college, partying, having fun, living my life. But I can't. How did we get all the honey bun glaze over the front of our shirt? Unless that's some other white stuff. I have that same conditioner, hey! All because I've let food take that all away from me. At this point, I can't really stop eating. I don't want to because it's the only good part of my day. You can. And I can never get enough of it. I always want something and it's like my hunger never stops. That's what she said. <laughs> Derricus. So hot. Please wait. So we got your stuff. Yes. Usually. <laughs> That's the biggest smile I've ever seen for a bag of chips, but maybe we could switch to like rice crisps or something like that. That's a quick way to cut some calories. Yeah, I start eating when Derricus comes over to check on me. He brings me something to eat or he'll make it for me. How are you feeling today? My back hurts. Same old, same old. Did you eat? No. Can you get me some burritos? Okay. And hash rods? Okay. Uh, how many do you want? Um, four. Okay. Four burritos and... Four burritos and what? Six hash rods. Okay. Jesus. Shana, to me, is more like family than a friend. And I just want to see her happy. I try to help as much as I can, but... Okay, well, if you're trying to help her, stop being Derekus the Dorito Demon who stops by with bags of chips all the time. But then again, I, I get what people say when they're like, all right, well, you're going to make their life hell. At the same time, what's she really going to do besides throw a fit about you not bringing her chips? There's nothing else she can do, but... People are then like, oh, well, that's a caretaker. You can't do that. You have to give them what they want or else they'll get on you. Yeah, whatever. Every time I cook something or I help her prepare her meals, I give it to her in portions, and that don't seem like enough. Because she eats when the sun comes up and eats when it goes down. She don't know when to stop. Sometimes I feel helpless, but I don't want to see her hurt, so I give her what she wants. Once I'm eating, everything becomes okay. And it's hard to even describe what it really does for me because it's like it takes me to this whole other place. Eating to me is my safe haven. It just makes me happy, I mean, no matter how You know how gross those things are gonna be straight out of the microwave? Like, we could've at least got a damn air fryer or something and get them a little crisp, but nuking hash browns, that's gross. That I am, it makes me happy. And I don't have anything else in my life that makes me feel that way. I always zone out when I have food. Like I'm in a trance sometimes. And I don't snap out of it until the food is gone. But then I just trance. want more. So I can go back to that. Because it just makes it all better. I feel like no matter what I go through, food will always make you feel better. So how do you stop something that does that for you? You can't really. So after Derek is feeds me, I find ways to keep eating. Engage, I gotta go. Do you need anything else? Oh, okay. Alrighty. See you later. Bye. Bye bye. Be careful. I'm never satisfied when it comes to my hunger. Because eating is such a good feeling. And once I'm eating, I won't think about things that are sad. How come? Um, can I please have a large Stuffed crust, pepperoni pizza. Well, Jesus, you just ate half a Taco Bell and a bunch of hash browns. You're going to go for a whole damn pizza? Well, I, I mean, I wonder how people think they get to that size. I don't think I ate that damn much. I just think I ate at the worst possible times, and I never ate anything healthy. But if you're doing breakfast and then a post, like, breakfast pizza, it's no wonder you get to that size, you know? Like... But you know that at that size, you just don't want to do anything about it yet. So I get what she's doing. Um, the cinnamon bites thing, and that's all. Thank you. So I eat and try and forget about my life and all the things I've been through. I've had a really hard life, and I felt like it's just been chaos ever since I was born. 
A lot of that is because of my dad and how he treated me and my mom. He was very verbally abusive and sometimes physical most of the time. A lot of it was because my dad had a drug problem, but I didn't know it then. As a kid, oh. all I knew was that he was either screaming at me, calling me names, or hitting me. So I never even felt wanted by him, and that hurt me a lot. That's sad. So she turned to food because her dad was this monster of a man, which there's always some form of trauma in most of the cases at least, but it's sad that a person that's supposed to protect you did that. Someone you're supposed to lean on and you're like your time of need was the person who kind of triggered and started you down this path. That's terrible. The relationship with Shauna's father was very traumatic for her Cricket. as a child. Hi. He wasn't easy to get along with. And I should have walked away years before, but we stayed together for a while. My mom never really knew how bad things were between me and my dad. She knew some of it, but most of what he did, he did when we were alone. So I just kept it to myself, because I didn't want to make my dad angry. Instead, of my father did things that hurt me. I would turn to food. Are we sure your grandparents weren't the one with the problem, naming your mom Cricket? What the hell did that come from? It was all I could really do and all I had power over. Eating made me feel like I was going to be okay. And that nothing was wrong. Aww. So I never wanted to stop eating and getting that feeling. And by the time I was eight, I was already over 150 pounds. But eventually, my mom decided to leave my dad after a big fight. The last straw was Shauna fell asleep in the back seat of the car, and he decided he was going to put a cigarette out in the gas tank. So we got into a fist fight out in the yard, and that was when I decided it was time to go. I mean, I could put up with all the junk he wanted me to put up with myself, but when it comes to Shauna, I wasn't going to let him try to kill her. I mean, Buddy's trying to turn himself into Inferno, man. Like, what in the hillbilly hand fishing is Buddy thinking putting a cigarette out in the gas tank? And that's when I packed up everything and moved to Kansas City. We just had pizza! Moving to Kansas City to a whole new school and people I didn't know. It was hard, but I was glad to be away from my father. But he wasn't completely out of my life. Because when my parents separated, he got summers with me. Not even sure why he wanted summers with me. Because he told me he didn't even want me around. And the just got worse. And when I got back home after the summer, I would have lots of bruises from my dad hitting me. I would just like say I fell off a bike or something. I know I told my mom because I was scared that if I told her, he'd do something to me and her. Oh my god. So I never went to her. She didn't know all the was happening. Yet. But as long as I had food, it was okay. So I was putting on my weight and I got up past 200 pounds by the time I was 10. But being that size made it harder at school because the kids started making fun of me a lot for how big I was. So I didn't have a lot of friends and I felt really isolated. No one really liked me. Her dad's trash, but also pizza rolls with a pizza, like, on the side is kind of weird. Just eat the pizza. What are we doing here? But I get how she turned to food, right? Because she was so traumatized as a kid. It makes sense. It definitely makes sense why this happened. It's just, at what point are you kind of going to take your life back and be like, I'm not going to let this decide what the rest of my life is? So, I mean, I get it, but at the same time, when are you going to take control? But my perspective was that I had food as my friend, so I didn't need anyone or anything else. So my weight gain continued and got even worse when I was a teenager. By the time I was in high school, I was already around 400 pounds. I just nonstop date. Yeah. I didn't care. If I saw it and I wanted it, I ate it. But it was getting too hard for me to get around. And the kids making fun of me got so bad, I just couldn't take it anymore. I dropped out of high school when I was 16. But being out of school, I just got worse and so depressed that I had a mental breakdown. And my mom had to take me to a mental hospital. When I was in the hospital, I had to tell the doctors why I was depressed. And I told my mom that about my dad and his abuse. And she kind of almost lost it. I had thought that once we left that he wasn't going to do it again because he would see that this is his only opportunity to visit with his daughter during the summers so he wouldn't act that way. 
And apparently he continued, and she finally broke down and told me about it when she was 16. I mean, her battle's definitely more mental than physical at this point. But if you beat yourself mentally before you even try, that's the big tragedy in all this. Everyone, at least everyone I've seen on this show or my own experience, I know that you're always your own harshest critic and you beat yourself before you even start half the time. Just because, just because the thought of uh, trying sounds scary because you're just like, I don't think I can overcome this. So don't ever beat yourself mentally first. You're always worth the effort to try. It broke my heart to see my mom that upset. It was just awful. I didn't know what to do and I just wanted to eat, but I couldn't while I was in the hospital. So I didn't gain much for a bit. And when I got out, I got a counselor. And she taught me a lot about how food is my cope, but it's also my enemy too. And that I, sh I need to learn how to eat safely. But even though I was getting counseling, it still didn't stop me from eating. And by the age of 18, I weighed around 500 pounds. I think I weighed in at 509 when I was 25. And that was the first time I ever went to a weight loss doctor or a bariatric doctor. And I thought about it at that point and I chickened out. I didn't feel like going through all the process or trying. I wish I would have now at that point. But, you know, life's full of mistakes. You make mistakes, you can only fight back from them. There were days when all I did was sit at home and eat nonstop. My mom wasn't happy about that because she wanted me to work on getting better with my counselor. But I didn't care because it was what I wanted to do. But when I turned 19, my disability kicked in and I got my apartment and a dog and a car. Oop. I moved a few cities away to Fall City so I could do what I wanted without anyone I knew bothering me. What I wanted to do was eat, so I kept eating, and that's mostly what I did for the next year of my life. When I was 20, I met someone online and told him he could move in with me, and Ooh. that didn't go well. It was okay at first, and then I found out he was a dopehead. How the hell? What? You met somebody online, you move them into your house almost instantly. She just wants companionship, to be honest. So this guy was looking for a roof, and you were just kind of there and convenient. So don't just trust people you meet on the internet, ever. People are freaking weird, man. People message me on here with the craziest stuff. I've been invited to a Fifty Shades of Fat dungeon about three times since I started this channel. He was addicted to meth, and that led to me getting addicted to meth, too. And it just got worse, because he started abusing me, physically and mentally. What? It's pretty much the type of love I was used to. So I just took it. So things got really bad and I just shut off. and was in this downward spiral until my mom came and got me. After about a month of me not being able to contact her consistently without him interfering, I finally went up there. People that were smoking like Crystal were way skinnier because you don't have the money to eat or whatever. But this chick's getting all this takeout. She's on disability, which I don't know how she's affording any of this. I guess it would have to be food stamps or something like that. So, uh, you met a meth head online, moved him into your house instantly, started smoking with him just to be part of the group and one of the cool kids, and it ended up here. This, this is a wild one for sure. And I told her, I packed her up, and I said, get everything you need down to Kansas City. I don't care what you do with him. Dump him off in a ditch somewhere, as far as I'm concerned. So I told him we were breaking up when I was leaving and going back to be with my mom. And he responded by stealing the van with all of my stuff in it, my ID, my wallet, clothes. And I had nothing. And I was addicted to meth. And I couldn't believe how much I had messed up my life. Oh, you mean to tell me the meth head stole your stuff and wasn't an upstanding citizen? Shocker there. Also, those Cinnabon things look freaking fire. If there's one thing I miss from when I was 600 pounds, it's freaking Cinnabon, man. I always joke about cheesecake, but looking at that thing right there is triggering my fat reflex, and I just want to pound a bunch of cinnamon. So right after, I went back to my mom's. I tried to take a bunch of pills, and my mom stopped me. Were they she weight loss pills? Them out and told me either you go to the hospital voluntarily or I'm calling the police. So I went to the hospital voluntarily 
I got myself together again and went back to live with my mom. And it felt like when I left the hospital the first time, because, you know, I was just eating a lot again to cope with things, and gaining and getting bigger. And that's pretty much my life now. And I can't believe I let it get like this. I can't believe that she punished that whole pizza. That host, she is ridiculous. We need to put her in a competitive eating contest right freaking now. She's taking Matt Stoney down, buddy. I got your next career right here. We're going to put you up against him. You're going to pound the Nathan's hot dogs, and we're going to go home champions. Hello. Hello. What are you doing? It's been so long since I've seen you. Oh, puppy. Oh, I miss you so much. <laughs> Good? Good. <laughs> so what's new? Nothing. <laughs> How are you? I'm fine. Tour was exhausting. It was? Yeah. Well, could you cook me a meal? Hmm. I guess. What are we talking about? We haven't had the first three meals? Damn, no wonder. Usually it's like, oh, well, they're kind, they're eating a lot, right? I've never seen them polish off four meals in a freaking row. This lady's a machine. I think Shauna's killing herself slowly by eating as much as she does every day. If Shauna doesn't stop, then she's probably going to die, so there's not going to be very much longer. The fat rock. I don't think she's going to last another two years. I always dread that phone call. I think someday somebody's going to call me and say that they woke up and found her dead. I stress about that a lot. If Shauna died, it would be the end of the world for me. I just don't know what I would do with myself and how I would handle life without her in my world. I mean, it's coming. When you're that size, you're playing tag with the Grim Reaper. But also, when it comes to ground beef, do you guys, like, buy the big old meat tube at friggin' Walmart? Or do you have to get, like, better grade ground beef? Because I gotta get the better stuff. I think there's a different taste in it. Also, my grandmother's a psychopath. She will take a little piece of ground beef and eat it. Just raw. I don't know why. I think it's disgusting, but she'll do it. I know I'm giving up my whole life for food. I don't even feel like I have a human body anymore. I would love to feel like a human again, but I don't think I'll ever get that. If I don't change my body. It's already made me a prisoner, where I'm missing out on everything. That looks awesome. It's time to eat. Here you go, your favorites. Wow, Cricket, we don't need to give her more pizza. Holy hell, this chick's bloodstream's half pizza at this point. Which, pizza, I can't blame you, it's my favorite food, but if we're trying to lose weight and we feel like we're a monster, let's stop friggin' like demolishing pizzas left and right. Because that's not helping the friggin' thing. Moldy. Okay. Oh, puppy wants meatloaf. <laughs> the life I want is nowhere near this. My food addiction is killing me, and it's really scary because I'm afraid to go to sleep because of it. I just want to be a normal 22-year-old, and it sucks because I can't. Because it's a stupid body. And everything's getting harder and worse every day. So I can't keep living like this. Everything has to change. Everything. And I'm running out of time to do that. My mom keeps reminding me of that. And telling me I need to go to Houston to see Dr. Now. And trying to get... Yeah, but it's all up to you. Like, nobody can make you do this. You have to want it. And you're still young enough. You'll bounce back a lot quicker than most people. I wish I was that young when I, like, made this choice. Help. And I know she's right because I feel like it took me time off. And if I think about it too much and what could happen soon, it terrifies me. I think your colon's a ticking time bomb after all that pizza. Nice looking trailer, at least. My mom convinced me to go to Houston to see Dr. Now. I told her I'd go if she'd take me, and she said she would. So I'm looking forward to having this time with her. Bro, this lady's a cheese addict. You see how many che how much cheese is in there? 
That's unreal. I don't know how. She's probably got like 20 pounds backed up in there eating all that damn cheese. It's something I've always wanted to do. Ever since she got her job as a tour bus driver. But I know this trip isn't going to be easy. But I know this is important for me to do. Not just for my mom, but for me. Because I don't want to live like this anymore. And I'm hoping right. Dr. Now can help me do that. Because no one else has been willing to help me. So as soon as my mom gets here to pick me up, we're going to go to Houston. It's going to be a really long car ride. Like 11 or 12 hours, my mom said. I'm scared to be in the car for as long as that. That and being able to eat enough is the only thing that's scaring me. So this is just going to be a hard trip. But I'll at least have my mom with me to help. She went to rent a car that was big enough for me. So I'm really happy about that and that we're going to get some time together. I thought we had a van out front. The van's not big enough? But yeah, I know that. I mean, <laughs> when I was in my early 20s, probably about her age, I worked at a Toyota dealership. Man, I used to try to jam into one of them little smart cars and whip around. I got that sucker up to 100 on the highway in Jacksonville, though. I was flying in that little smart car. Which is funny, because you would think at my size, I'd bog the sucker down, but... Hey, I got your food. Thank you. I think we'll eat on the road, though, because we're already late. Oh, my gosh. Okay. <laughs> well, I got the truck, but I don't know if you're still going to be able to get into it. We seem um, to hurry, though. But, yeah, let's go. You coming? Oh, no. I'm coming. I'm coming. Now, give me help. Give me a second. Oh, I hope I can fit because my appointment with Dr. Now is tomorrow. So if this truck isn't big enough, I'm not sure what my options are gonna be to get to Houston and do this. If that's not big enough, you're in for a hell of a shock trying to get into any normal car. But that, that little plastic step up thing, that's what I'd be worried about. She's about to eat it hard if she tries to stand on that. But you'd be shocked how much little plastic lawn chairs can hold up because they're just built just right to do it, but... Timber! Oh, yeah. Think about Shut the door. Bruise them with cricket. As long as I have food, I think I can make this trip. But I just hope the fast food places aren't too far apart on the road. Because that's the only thing that's going to make this drive too much for me. But as long as I... How often do we got to stop? You got meat sticks on go. She brought you food to start. This chick is just a bottomless pit. I don't think I've ever seen anybody eat this much. Just back to back to back. The whole damn episode's just been her eating so far. I have some good food like this. I'll be alright and I know I can make it. The meat stick maniac strikes again. We've almost made it halfway to Houston. But I told my mom I'm starving. So we got some more fast food. And we're stopping off. I'm really sore, but I've been holding it together. And once I eat and rest tonight, I think I'll be ready to do this again tomorrow. But I know tomorrow we have to start really early. And we have to go even longer than today. I'll be able to handle it as long as we have places to stop to get something. I cannot wait to get into the room. I am right. so wiped out. Bro, this is going to be the hardest episode I think Dr. Now's had. Because the amount she eats, it's going to be really hard to switch, like flip that switch in her head to make her think that she wants a better life more than she wants food. Because so far, it's just been food, food, food. Also, I'm you suck at parking. Food or 
always gets me through anything. That's the reason I can't stop eating. So I'm not sure how Dr. Mal's gonna help me do that. I just need his help and I'm hoping I get it tomorrow. So it's gonna be Dr. a really Mal long day tomorrow. But if I get what I need to have a new life, then it will all be worth it. But we'll just have to see how it goes tomorrow. Cause we won't know until I get there and I see him. How are you feeling, like, physically? My leg is killing me and my back is killing me. I mean, the fat Grim Reaper will take you down a couple notches. You'll never want more fast food. Also, you guys hear that? There's, like, a crazy thunderstorm going on outside. I'm just going to keep going. I just want to go to sleep. You do? But I'm still hungry. We've been back on the road for about five and a half hours. So we're close to Houston and Doctor now. But this day of traveling has been a lot harder than yesterday. And I'm in more pain. But my mom's been helping me stay distracted by getting me some good stuff to eat most of the day. Well, we just drowned all our sorrows in ranch. Do you want any sandwich with that ranch? Holy hell. Food is pretty much the only thing keeping me going right now. I'm really nervous about meeting Dr. Now. And my biggest fear is that he tells me my body is too messed up for my weight. So it's too late to get help. And that I should have done it sooner. <laughs> and I'm hoping he at least thinks I have a chance to do this program and try to make my life better. Welcome to Dr. Now's Chub Castle, baby. We're here to get rid of all these pounds. But you, she looks traumatized already. That is like a thousand mile stare thinking I'd rather be at Arby's getting extra horsey sauce from a meth head. We made it. You okay? Mm. So scary. Shauna? <clears throat> but I don't know what he's gonna say. So I'm just really afraid right now of what's gonna happen. I just hope it's good and I get a chance. Because I don't know what I weigh anymore. See what kind of damage Sonic and all has done to you. A Chub Castle. Isn't it funny that there's a gym upstairs? I just noticed that. It said fit to live or fit to live, something like that. I'm at Dr. Now's to see if he'll let me do his program, but I have to get my way in first. I'm nervous about what it's gonna be. I'm hoping that it's not much higher than 600, but I'm not sure really. And I wish I didn't have to find out. I just hope it's not bad. Uh -oh. 659. Ooh. I mean, that's what four pizzas a day will end up doing to you, so. I'm embarrassed about my weight and that my mom was here to see it too. Knowing it's that high makes me feel a lot of guilt and shame. And I want more than anything to change and to lose weight. I just need help to do it because I know I can't on my own. That's unbelievable. I know. Bum, 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 bum. Hi. Hey, y'all doing? How are you? I'm doing good. I'm Dr. Nizarte. I'm Shauna. Nice, nice to meet you, Shauna. Cricket. You stud. And your mom. Mom, okay. Where are y'all coming from? Um, Missouri, Kansas City. Kansas City. That's a bit of a drive. You feeling okay? Yes, sir. Okay, good. All right. Uh, Shauna, it looks like you're at 659 today, huh? Yeah. And you only eat 22, huh? Yes, sir. Oh, all right. So tell me a little bit about yourself. Have you been... I like pizza. I like ranch. I can't stop for anything but fast food every hour or two. I've never seen a bottomless pit like this chick. She is going crazy. 
heavy all your life? Yes, sir. No, all right. Have you tried to lose weight at any point in your life? Yeah, but I just don't stay on the diet usually, honestly. Why? Like, I eat too much or I eat too little. I don't think eating too little is the problem. But when you overeat, <laughs> do you do that because you're hungry or you're stressed or what? Um, usually either hungry or, or I'm just bored or depressed. It's routine for her at this point. Uh, that's why she's going to be so tough to turn around. She can do it, but she's going to have to drastically start thinking differently. Or something. Okay, so use food to cope. So, Shana, you need to learn how you're going to correct your eating habit, right? Yes, sir. All right. So we're going to start with the 1,200 calorie a day, high protein, low carb diet. So I give you a packet that breaks the whole diet down, where you eat only three times a day, no snacking. You think you can do that? Yes, sir. All right, so I'm going to give you a goal. At your weight, if you stick to the diet, you should very easily lose at least 80 pounds over the next two months. 80 pounds? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she could do it. 80 pounds is a lot for most people. But at her rate, if she were to like cut down the sodium, do all that, she could do that. I'm not saying I ever did it. I wasn't that bought in at first. But she could. She could do it. It's just a lot. Dr. Now is really strict. You can lose almost twice that if you stick to a diet like you should, okay? If you do that, then we we'll consider you for weight loss surgery. Mm -hmm. But for that, you have to move down to Houston. Yes, sir. Okay? And you need someone here with you to support you and help you. Yes, sir. Okay. So if you move uh, to Houston, who's going to be coming with you to support you? No one. No one will be here with you? When you're over 600 pounds, you cannot do everything for yourself. So it's dangerous to live alone, right? Yeah, but I don't have anybody. All right, so you have to think about that. But first, you... Do you guys think she really thought, like, hey, I'm going to do this? Or did she just think, like, this is what everyone wants me to do. They want me to lose weight, so I'm going to act like I'm going to jump on the program? Because nothing about her so far has been like, okay, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. Like, I, I want this, I want this more than anything. But a lot of people just think the surgery's the answer and they're not going to have to do anything. That is drastically the wrong line of thinking. Your focus needs to be on changing your diet and losing 80 pounds. To show me you're willing to work hard and you're ready to do this, okay? okay. And I'm also going to give you some exercises to start doing, okay? Okay. And you're sweating in your feet? Mm-hmm. I got my... Yeah. Let me see how is your leg doing. That's Taco Tuesday. So you got lymphedema in both legs. Let me see yeah. the other one. Yeah. All right. So if we get your way down, we can help address your lymphedema, okay? Okay. So you need to start working hard to do that, okay? Yeah. Does that mean I'm in your program? Well, uh, if you uh, lose weight and change your eating habit, yeah. Okay. Okay? Now, you should be under 200 pounds, so you got a 460 pound that you have to lose. Okay. Okay? Okay. But that starts with losing 80 pounds over the next two months. Yes, sir. All right, any other question? Well, I don't think so. I think we're good. All right. I think we're okay. If you need it. I think if she could just see a little bit of progress and be proud of herself, she might get going. But so far, I ain't got that much hope for her. I want to see everybody do good. When I, when I watch these, I'm hoping they do good. It's just, it's hard to get past the thought of, like, I can't do this. Like, I'm just holding yourself back is the main flaw when it comes to this. And then, give me a call. Okay. All right, so nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. My concern about Shana right now is that she doesn't seem very motivated to start turning her life around. And that makes me wonder if it's someone else pushing her to do this. Possibly her mother, because there seems to be a dynamic between them where Shana is still dependent on her mother like a child is. And if that's the case, we're not going to be able to make much progress with her unless we change that. 
but hopefully she will show me that she's motivated and ready to do what she needs by hitting her weight loss goal by her next appointment. I'll go get the She's almost more childish than Dolly was, honestly. And it seems like maybe she's just stunted from like her dad not being a good father, her childhood being a little traumatic. Maybe that's just followed her into adulthood, so she doesn't want to act like an adult because she feels like her childhood was stolen from her. But I'm just a fifth grade peer mediator, so don't take anything I say that serious. Come on, Cricket, let's cruise. I've never lost weight like Dr. Now wants me to lose. 80 pounds is so much. And thinking about having to lose that makes me scared and a little sick to my stomach because I don't want to let anyone down. So I'll try my hardest because I really want to make it. All right, 60 pounds down. Bro, I thought it was the, uh, her, look at that, her freaking thing shooting like venom out of it. You got like a spitting cobra down there eating the dye out of your pants. Oh my god, that Chernobyl crotch is going everywhere on this damn show. It's been almost a month since I went to see Dr. Now. I've asked Derekus to try and get me healthier meals. That's better. And help me figure out a better diet. There's a lot of papers Dr. Now gave me with his diet and exercise on him. I'm not sure how, but I think they left him in a hotel on the way back home. And I've been scared until my mom would call Dr. Now and ask him for another one. But I'm hoping with how Derekus is helping me that I'm losing as much as Dr. Now told me. And I'm also trying to do walking for exercises to build up my stamina. And I feel like that's all. I can tell you right now, lost or not, potatoes are not going to be on your low carb diet. So that's better than how you were eating, sure. But losing the damn diet plan, it's crazy because it's 1,200 calorie, low carb. There's not much to it besides that. Doctor Now has a book even, I think, if you go and look for it. Helping me a lot because it's been hard. Yeah. The potatoes and corn. What? Potatoes and corn. So I'm hoping if I lose a Doctor Now told me to lose, and figure out moving to Texas. And he'll tell me I can do his program. And I talked to my mom about Derek is coming with me. And she said she'd keep paying him to take care of me. How do you feel about moving to Texas? Hmm? How do you feel about moving to Texas? Huh? I don't know. How do you feel about moving to Texas? I'm excited. I wish I still had the papers he gave me that had all the diets and exercises on it. So why haven't you called him and asked him, inform him on what happened? Because that would require her acting like an adult and doing something that she knows she should be doing. But that also means that she would have to get way more strict on her diet. So we're just not going to do that. We're going to ignore it, play this like ignorant like blissful ignorance type thing that she likes to do i guess but it's crazy to me that you could get to the size where you think you're a monster and at the same time like be in the program but not really want to i know that there's this huge contradiction and i've been there where you want it but you don't want to do all the effort involved or you just don't think you can but the way she's doing it doesn't even seem like she's trying at all i was trying i just was failing trying failing I was up and down a lot at the start, so. Because I'm nervous and scared. He's gonna be like, this whole time you haven't had them? And I'm gonna be like, no. I mean, he's gonna be like, why? And I'm gonna be like, because I was so scared and nervous to call you. I thought you would just keep me on the program altogether. Or you could just tell him you forgot about him in a rental car. And he's gonna be like, so it took you almost a whole month to realize that? I'm gonna be like, turtle mode activated. Like, I'm gonna be so scared. Anyway, you look at it, you're gonna have to call him. I know. <laughs> <laughs> like, my life literally rests in this man's hands. Turtle mode? What in the teenage. That is. Wow. This chick is like really immature. I don't wanna call Dr. Now. I just don't want him to be upset. 
what I want to do is keep doing the diet I am now and make it enough. So I'm trying the hardest I can, but it's just not easy. I'm praying for you, because Doctor Now is not going to play no games. Uh-oh. It's been two months since my Doctor Now appointment, and I was supposed to be back for another one sometime last week, but I was too scared to go, because I never found the papers with his diet and... <laughs> I mean, it's been a month and the same box of protein shakes is still sitting right there. So either she's just buying new ones or she's not drinking those suckers. And from the size of things and the no change in clothes, I, I don't think she's done very much, to be honest. Stuff. So I've been just trying to figure it out without them. Derek is kind of pushing me to call doctor now to ask him for another copy. But I was too scared about what he would say. But when my mom called me to ask me how it went, I told her everything and she made me promise to call Dr. Now to tell him what happened and to try and see if he'll still help me. So I'm doing that, but I really don't want to. Uh-oh. If we would have made this phone call like a month or two ago, I don't think he really would have cared. Like, oh, okay, I'll send you out some new papers. It's the fact that you waited and wasted the time when Dr. Now's time is pretty valuable when it comes to like a bariatric surgeon. He's kind of the friggin' man when it comes to being 600 pounds and losing weight, so. Hi, can I please talk to Dr. Now's Arden? Okay, man, who's calling? Shauna Collins. Okay. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Dr. Now. Hi, Shauna. You missed your appointment, so if you're calling, I'm guessing you're still in Kansas City right now, huh? Uh-oh. Yes, sir. So what's going on? You doing your diet and everything you need? Uh Wait, so she just missed her appointment and she's just now calling? Oh, this ain't gonna end up good. Ooh, doctor now is about to rip her a new one. Um, I'm doing my diet, I think. But um, when I was coming back home, I lost the um, papers you gave me. So you lost the paper and uh, you didn't call us to get another copy? <laughs> um, I was scared you would get mad at me if I called back and said I lost them. Why should we get mad at you because you lost something? I don't know. I just thought you'd get mad. Well, if you didn't have the diet, then you didn't know what to do. So I'm guessing you wasted two months of time. You could have been making progress. Is that the case? I don't think so. I've still been trying. You know, you come and see us to get help. We give you the first step of that help, and you not only don't seem to care enough to keep track of it, but you don't try to get another one from us. So you don't seem very motivated to do this. So tell me, what is your plan? What is your idea? Um, to ask you if you could send me new papers. That's what you should have done two months ago. But yeah, but the papers aren't going to, like, flip the mindset for you. Your mindset's what needs to change. And I get this not wanting to cause, like, trouble or call or even, like, inconvenience anyone. But Dr. Now is there to help you. And while you're at it, you might want to ask him what's going on with that Clorox crotch of yours. Because I ain't never seen it die that damn bad. I don't know what's going on. Some of you ladies told me it's like a pH thing. But that thing's straight acidic. Unless you're shooting lemon juice out of that thing, I don't know how it's eating the color out of your pants. The diet is only a temporary thing to get you in the right path. But eventually, what are you going to do? Because you don't seem very concerned about turning your life around. Or that you really want to do this. I am. And I've been working hard already. Well, I hope that's true. But I thought you made it to your goal. So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to give you one more month to lose 50 pounds from your last weigh-in. So if you've already been losing weight like you think, this should be no problem. And during the diet, you should be able to lose a lot more. Okay? Okay. Okay, we'll send you another copy of the diet again, okay? Okay. But you need to eat only three times a day, no back in between, only meat and vegetable, and no high-calorie food, okay? Um, I also stopped, I also stopped snacking, and I stopped drinking soda, too. Okay, that's great. 
Yeah. All right, so we get that stuff. She had to throw some positives in there. Like, Dr. Now, I did this. Praise me. But obviously, if you're on a diet, you're not going to be snacking unless you do the thing where you eat like five small meals a day. I, but that's not considered snacking, I don't think. The soda thing, soda's got to go out the window. That's the only thing I drank for probably like a decade. I don't think I touched a bottle of water all that time. Amen hey to you. Okay, make sure you're doing the diet like you need. And also keep working on the getting on who can move down here with you. If we move ahead with you, okay? Yes, sir. And I'm going to try harder, I promise. Okay, good. If you need anything, let me know. Okay. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. I feel really bad, because I know Dr. Now isn't happy with me. But I'm glad he's giving me the papers again. And more time, but I still a lot of weight to lose by then. It just sucks. Me. Not wanting to disappoint people makes it harder for me to try because I feel like I'm already disappointing them. So, like, what's the... Look, stop defeating yourself before you even start. Like, you're still very much in this. You're very young. You could turn this around like nobody's business. You could be this, like, shining example of what's possible if you just change your mindset. And I could see you getting there, but you're going to have to buy in a lot more than this. You're not going to... You're not going to sit here and kind of cruise to success. The only place where success comes before work is the dictionary, so. Why are you trying type thing? <laughs> also, see a doctor for that damn thing. How's it dyeing your clothes? I'm back in Houston for another appointment with Doctor now. Derek has turned me down this time because my mom is still traveling for a while. Damn, Derek. This yes. trip driving here is too hard for me to do without any help. I almost just crash right on into the curb. He almost popped that sucker and went into the friggin' Chubb Castle. I'm gonna call her after I'm done with the appointment to tell her what happened. So I'm really scared to find out my progress because I don't want to let her or Doctor now down. Papers Dr. Now sent me with his diet and exercises were a lot harder than what I was doing. But I tried to do what they said. But after a few days, I lost them again. I tried to reprint them, but I couldn't find the email. And I don't know what happened. Shauna? So I've just been trying really, really hard. To do as much as I can to diet and lose weight. I really don't want to mess this up and let everyone down again. What in the werewolf? I'm a doctor. Oh, come on, let's see. Has she had any of them Twilight Twinkies? Because then we'll know for damn sure she didn't lose any weight. You can't. What's his name? Jacob? Is he the one? No. Which one's in Twilight? I don't know. I forget. Been a long time since I saw that. I think Jacob. Yeah, Edward's the vampire. Uh, Jacob. Okay. Now I was off with Sedaricus. And I'm about to see how my weight loss did. And if my diet was enough. At my last weigh-in, I was 659. And Dr. Now changed my goal to lose 50 pounds. So I need to see a number below 609. Oh shit, the lycanthrope liar. You didn't do nothing. You didn't even cut out sodas probably at that damn rate. You just chilled right there. There's no way she just sat at that way eating what the other guy, what that guy was making her. I forget his name. Demarius? Demar I forget. She took a crap. I'm not sure what happened. I thought I was trying really hard and that I'd have better progress. So I'm really scared because I don't know what this means. You're about to get ripped a new one what it means. Hello. How you all doing? Good, yeah. how are you? I'm good, thanks. And who is the partner with you? My cousin Derekus. Nice to meet you. Derekus. All right, uh, Shana, it's three months later and you haven't lost any weight. So what's going on? Ah. Uh... 
I didn't read the booklet because I lost it again. You're telling me you lost it again? Yeah. Look, Doctor, now you might as well just send up some damn smoke signals. She ain't seeing that shit. There ain't, I, I doubt she even opened the email. You could have just thrown that into the void. You just wasted your time clicking send on that one, buddy. Yes, yeah. The second time? Yeah. You lost the email too? Oh, yeah. silly me. So why didn't you call me again and ask for it? I was afraid you'd be mad at me. No, I, I wouldn't get mad at you then, but I get mad at you now for doing nothing and wasting yeah. all that time. Yeah. And you haven't lost any weight. Quick, turtle for protection, quick. Come on, get up in that shell. So what's the point of coming here from Kansas City to Houston and, and going back and coming back and not losing weight in all that time? Duh. So, Whataburger and fast food all along the friggin' way. This is like the highway to get bigger in Texas. What is with that? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? I guess it was just lazy on my part. Turtle. Can you accept with the food and be my guest? So why you didn't lose weight? Hmm. I didn't put any effort in, I guess. Food? What do you mean? I didn't do my part like I should have by calling you and telling you that I well, lost it. You didn't do that, but couldn't you eat more appropriately? For you to be 650 pounds, you have to eat seven to eight thousand calories a day to keep that weight on. Damn, there ain't no way she's not snacking if that's the case, cause you ain't getting that from chicken breast, potatoes, and corn. This chick had to be just woofing down friggin' uh well I know. With her microwave and the pizza rolls, I wanted to see in her damn freezer. That's what I needed to see. Forget the fridge, show me what's in the damn freezer. So what is that point of eating that much and and coming down here and give me this sad story if we lost the paper. The diet will help you hit the goal, but without it, you could have still lost something. The paper was the only thing that's gonna keep you from losing no. weight? You said you thought you were losing, so what happened? I don't know. So, what is it, you eating whatever, whatever, whenever, and you expect anybody else to do the job for you? No, sir. So what do you expect to happen? It's just gonna melt off. Casper the Pound Ghost is coming to steal all them suckers away. But also, I don't think, I think if she came back next month, she would just say, uh, I can't read. What do you expect? I couldn't read the email. So that would be her next excuse, probably. Then I magically make you lose weight? No. I have to do my part and I did it. Well, right now, it doesn't seem like you have any interest in make any changes because we gave you the instruction, you lost the instruction, we gave it to you again, and you lost it the second time. So, so far, every choice you make shows me this doesn't really matter to you. No, oh, sir, it does. Well, if this is important to you, then what do you want to do about it? Try to lose weight. Okay, what is stopping you from doing that? Food. Eating too much. Why? Don't you realize that's a harm in you? Yes, sir. Look, if this isn't a case where Doctor Now needs to send someone to therapy, I don't know what is. Because therapy is going to definitely be something that's needed for her. You do? Yeah. Okay, then what do you do about it? She'll stop. Oh. We don't want you to stop eating. We know, want like, you to eat, know, like, eat normal. Well, well, yeah, like eat better choices. Better choices. Yeah. So eat we less. give you uh, another uh, instruction. Do you think you can make those part of your program and work on them? Yes, sir. You're not going to lose them again, huh? No. Okay. So you ready to do this or not? Yeah. Okay, is your family helping you to do that? Yes, sir. Where's your mom? I thought she was going to help you do this. She couldn't be here. So, is she helping you with your weight loss? I'm the homemaker. I, I make sure she keeps everything neat, neat and stuff. I help her around the house, like, get her around and move her around to get more exercise. And 
Okay, well, if you... Yeah, but you're also the chef, right? Besides Chef Mike, the microwave, which she loves to go to, you're the one that's cooking the food, but you can't control everything. She's going to have to take some kind of accountability, which I don't think is her big thing, accountability. She likes to deflect a lot, but maybe that's all part of her childhood, just being traumatic or her dad. But at some point, you got to want better for yourself. Like, I don't know how many times I could say that. If you don't want to look in the mirror and then see yourself looking back and not recognize yourself, you're going to have to lose some weight and try. Like, if you are helping her doing anything to get healthy, shouldn't we see some result in, mm -hmm. on the scale? But there are no results, so none of this adds up. So who cooks? I do all the cooking and cleaning. So oh. if you need something, you give it to her? I cook it and I... My thing is I cook it and I make her try to go make her to do for she can move around, make her fix her own plate. I cannot get her to eat vegetables. She eats a lot of meat, but she just won't eat the vegetables. Unless it's the ones she likes, like potatoes and corn. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, potatoes are, like, the major problem. I would say 600 pounds, like, potatoes are definitely your friggin' favorite. And I can't blame anybody for that. French fries, good. Scallop potatoes, good. Mashed potatoes, good. You find me a potato I don't like, and I'll be shocked. Well, if she eats like you say, then where are the extra calories coming being 650 pounds? Probably her snacking habits. When I'm at work. Okay. Twinkie thief. You're 22 and, and 650 pounds. Almost 660, really. You could have your whole life ahead of you. Don't you want that? Yeah. Do you have a goal in your life? Yeah. What is your goal in your life? To be like a um, tour bus driver. Why tour bus? Because <laughs> I thought, like, the, I like the thought of, like, um, Touring with bands and stuff. Because that's what her mom does, and she doesn't have a thought in her head that's individual to herself. You got, what do you want for you? Stop just mimicking other people. There's got to be something that you want, something for you that you see that's just not something you've seen from your mom. Uh, this chick doesn't seem very mentally developed, to be honest. She's like an 11-year-old walking around. Okay. My mom does it, and I like, I like her job. Okay, so uh, how do you think you're going to get that job? I don't know. <laughs> this way you're going, you're not going to make it to 30. You know that, right? Yes, sir. So you're killing yourself with the food, and we're trying to stop you from doing that, and it doesn't seem to matter to you. Uh, you're in the world that that is, doesn't exist. And you got like a cocoon around yourself and uh, you're not seeing the reality of what's going on. And you depend on everybody else to make those changes for you, okay? And none of that's going to happen until you decide to change it. Nobody else can do that for you. Yeah, but there's this major problem with accountability. It's almost like you just want to deflect and, like, not acknowledge that you've done this to yourself. I never did that. I knew I did it to myself. I knew I was going to have to make some changes. But it's hard to think you can make those changes. That's the problem. It's really hard to see a future where you can make it to where you're healthier and happier. But it's absolutely there for you if you try hard enough. It is everything is up to you. Not everybody else. It's your life. And you got to make those changes. All right? If you want to live longer, then you're going to have to do the right thing. Yes, sir. Okay? Mm -hmm. So we'll give you one last chance to do that. But if you come next month and you don't lose weight, I don't know what else we can do for you. Yes, sir. And you're in a pathway that you're going to kill yourself and nobody can help you with that. You're 650 pounds. If you stick with the 1,200 calorie diet, you can lose 100 pounds a month. But what I want you to do is to only lose 80 pounds over two months. That's 40 pounds a month, and you should easily be able to do that. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that should be easy goal. 
I mean, you better stick an extra one of these damn diet plans in the back of her car where she doesn't know where it is so it can't mysteriously go missing whenever you think she's going to have to stick to a diet. Because she keeps just misplacing them suckers. She's so silly. You know, that's not going to be very hard to do. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. So let's do that and I'll hope uh, to see you in two months. Okay. All right. Any other question? No, sir. I get you the exercise and give you the breathing material. This time, don't lose it, okay? Yes, sir. All right, I'll see you in two months. If you need anything before then, give me a call. Okay. All right, I'll see you all later. Thank you. Okay. So far, Shauna has only confirmed my concerns about the issues we may have with her and how difficult it's going to be to start turning her situation around. Let's go, Shauna. We're going to huff and puff and blow these pounds away, baby. You got this. The biggest issue being that she hasn't decided whether she really wants to do this or not. But all she needs to show me is a little bit of real effort to prove to me she's ready to do what it takes to take back control of her life. I'm just more upset now because I thought that he'd understand, but he didn't really. Instead, he gave me the 80 pounds goal again and told me I have to lose weight or I'm going to die. And Well, doctor now just isn't going to cut your stomach out just for like shits and giggles. But also at the same time, you're playing stinky twinky with tweakers before this. You'd think you'd lost some weight doing that. Did you guys see the lady who cut her boyfriend's head off because she was tweaking and then proceeded to continue the act insanity man i'm scared that he said that but at the same time it's true so i need to fix it big success okay the past month has not gone anywhere like how I wanted it. Oh shit, I thought those were Rice crisp, but they look like chips to me now. Damn. I love some Rice crisp, man. Like 80 calories, 100 ca calories for the caramel ones. So good. Basically, my mom told me I had to move out and I had nowhere to live all of a sudden. So, I basically had to pack everything and move out. My mom gave me a little money to try and help me transition to being on my own. Uh oh. And she also told me that she can't keep paying Derekus to take care of me. And so I have no one to move to Texas with me now. So I feel like my life is just flipped upside down. And I'm trying to figure out how to survive. And I'm scared. Because I feel really lost. I just feel bad and it's all my fault and I don't know what to do and I just feel well, I can tell you for a damn fact eating that bread ain't gonna help the situation. We're on a low carb diet, lady. What are you doing? You, uh, she loves to blame everyone else for everything that's happened to her. No accountability at all. That is probably the worst trait I've seen on the show in a long time from anyone. Like it's gonna all crumble down around me and I just, I hate being by myself because I know whenever I'm alone I just feel like Everything just goes spiraling out of control and I just don't know what to do anymore. Oh, yeah. That's the perfect thing to do. We're losing weight, so let's take down the tuna tower. I need help. Okay. You need to help you. You're making my name look bad. Hey, Merry Christmas. I miss my appointment with Dr. Now again. I just need more time. Because I'm trying to get back on my own two feet and figure out my living situation long term. Because I'll be out of the money my mom gave me in a couple months. I tried looking for a job online that I could handle to make some money, but there's nothing I could find. So I have no idea what I'm going to do. Okay, it's zero calories. I didn't know what she was doing here. But also, how much money did your mom give you? Or how cheap is it to live in Kansas City? 
it must be way cheaper because over here in Maryland, you're getting nailed for probably at least 12, 1300, even for like a studio. Ew. I'm scared I'm just letting everyone down constantly. And I know Dr. Nell's not happy with me either. I'm talking to him today because he wants to talk to me. So I told his office people I'd do it. Uh-oh. And I'm hoping he understands that I'm trying. We're about to run out of mommy's money. Have to start selling some damn feet pics on the internet. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? All right. Uh, so it's been uh, several months since I've seen you, and uh, you missed another appointment. So what's going on with you? Um, I don't know right now. Is mom not with you anymore? No, she moved to Arizona for work. Okay. So what happened to Derekus? Um, he abandoned me. He's left. It was just, just one thing after another. Right, so it seems like nothing going right for you in Kansas City, and you have no support system, mm -hmm. and uh, you're not benefiting you staying over there. So it's better for you to come down to Houston so we can. But did he abandon you, or did he stop getting paid and say, deuces, I ain't making any more burritos if I ain't getting any more bucks? Because that's probably what happened there. I'm happy and have a support system for you to get you in the program so you can lose weight and change your life. You think you can do that? No. Why? Because I have no way down there. No, I have no one to help me move. I have no way to go down there. So what option we got for you? I honestly don't know right now. It's like... Shana, it's not looking like you really want to do this because you came down here, we gave you a diet over six months ago, but it doesn't look like you have lost any weight. And, you know, you're almost nearly 700 pounds, BMI 100, 23 years old, and um, not able to do anything to change your life. You're not going to live long enough. It's just a defeatist attitude. She's defeated herself before she even starts. She thinks her mom should make her lose weight or Demer whatever his name was. That guy should be just sitting there taking care of her. No, take some damn accountability. What is wrong with you? So what is your ambitions and what do you want to do? What I do you want to do with your life? I want to come down there, but I have no way. Selfie so pics. Well, if you can. Why haven't you been able to follow the diet? You still have the diet? I lost um, it. Those are in the boxes I have packed. My oh. stuff. I wasn't able to bring all my stuff with me, so. Okay, so what would this? So the most important thing we had, the diet plan, went straight under the dumpster because we just couldn't drive with that heavy piece of paper in our hands. Did you pack up? I don't know. Sorry, I think at this point you need to find a way to come down to Houston. And we got a program so we can get your weight down because it looked like you're almost gonna hit 700 pounds and it's gonna be a BMI of over 100 and it's gonna be a very dangerous situation for you, okay? Okay. And you're only 23, but I don't think you're gonna even make it to 30 the way you're going. I mean, you're lucky that you're that young, to be honest, because I've seen how you're walking. I wasn't walking that way at 23. I'd be surprised if you're not totally bedbound by 30. At the rate you're going, there's no shot that you're not, honestly. Uh, it seems like you have not got the hold of your life and you don't know what your priority are at this point. And you're not following the diet and you're not doing the right thing to get your life changed to better. And it's just going to be a very dangerous situation for you. Uh, I don't think you are realizing that. And you just procrastinate, and the longer you wait, the harder it's going to be to turn your life around. So this is going to be priority for you to make the changes and see if you can move down to Houston as soon as possible. Because um, it doesn't seem that you have any support system in Kansas City. Yes, sir. 
she gave up on her support system. Her mom was trying, honestly. She took her there. Her mom was also making her friggin' like five pounds of meatloaf beforehand. So maybe not trying the right way. But she's got to try for herself, man. People will offer you food, all this and that. My mom will still call, be like, hey, can I bring by this for you to eat? And I'm like, no, I'm on a diet. have been for like two friggin' years. And there's nothing there for you to continue there. So let's get you uh, moved down here as soon as possible, okay? Okay. All right. So you need to make those arrangements. But in the meantime, uh, you stick with the healthy eating habit. Don't overeat, okay? Mm hmm Take the diet out of the boxes and we'll send it to you again. And do your exercises and uh, see if we can get uh, to move down to you. Okay. I can try. And then I want you to come back here in either a month or two months. Whichever you figure out. If it is in one month, I expect you to have lost 50 pounds by then. And if it's in two months, I expect you to lose 80 pounds by then. Okay? Okay. Okay, good. In the meantime, you follow the diet and try to eat healthy and get down to uh, Houston as soon as possible. If you need any help or you need anything, uh, you can give me a call, okay? Okay. All right. I look forward to seeing you down to Houston and see if we can change your life for better, okay? Yes. Look, I want to see her do well. Honestly, even though she's, like, infuriating and she has all these excuses... I don't want anybody to live this life. It's miserable, it's terrible, but if you're gonna sit there and act like it's everybody else's fault and none of your own, that's what bugs me about her. That and the fact that she just keeps losing the damn diet plan. That thing is probably not that hard. We're gonna have to get that thing tattooed to the back. Oh, good Sir. God. All right, Shannon, give me a call if you need anything, okay? Okay, thank um, you. Yeah. Bye. Bye. That wasn't as terrible as I was thinking. I can still tell I'm disappointing Doctor now. Ugh. But I feel like he wants to help me figure out things so I can get my life together again. The thought of moving to Houston on my own is terrifying. But I'm pretty much on my own now. So if I move to Houston, at least there I'll have Doctor now to help me. So somehow I have to figure out how to do it and how to lose 50 pounds. But right now I have no idea how I'm gonna make the move to Houston on my own. We don't want to boop the snoot of the dog. Hello? You know how surprised I am that Dr. Now's like, just moved down here? He doesn't do that. He's seen way too many people fail. Also, funny product placement to have five guys in the background. Never ate there. Everybody raves about their burgers, though. My mom is taking me to the airport today, so I can go to Houston on my own and live there. Woo. She says she thinks it's a really good idea that I moved to Houston and tried to do Dr. Now's program. And she said she'll give me a little bit more money to get down there and try and find a place that I can afford. But my mom is going to help me catch. get checked in. But after that, I'm on my own, and that's the part I'm scared of. Thank you. All right, and we'll take care of your bag. Thank you. Have a great day. I'm really scared to do this. I haven't been on a plane since I was eight years old. And I've never traveled alone at this size before. So I'm just stressed about doing this. They're not gonna let me come in past this line though. I'm surprised they've got her walking that whole distance and she just didn't like, uh, I need some kind of mobile scooter or something. That's a pretty hefty walk at that size. I don't think I would have been comfortable doing that either. But you see the way she's limping, her back, feet, everything has to hurt like hell. But this is probably the most exercise she's got on the show. You know that, right? Yeah. If you don't do this, then I don't know what is going to happen. Mm -hmm. But you got this. this. I have no doubt. It is going to change your life forever. Just go get it. Okay. I love you. Go ahead. Go get it, Shauna. Try. I'm really scared right now. I'm already starting to hurt a lot. I feel like my legs are giving out. 
This is really hard, and it's more of the activity I think I've had in a long time. This is already too much. I'm so exhausted, but I just hope I don't run out of energy before I get to the gate. I hope the rest of the way isn't going to be too hard of a walk. In all honesty, when you're that size, you're kind of just plowing forward to find the next seat. And the fact that she's gone this long, hats off to her. But that's got to be because she's 23. Add two more years of that sucker, she ain't making it down that terminal. I'm so really nervous about getting on the plane. How that's going to go. I just hope I don't get stuck in the aisle or can't fit in the seat or something. Oh. I'm very relieved I made it on. I'm really tired, but I'm excited about that. Being able to do that was my biggest fear. So I'm feeling better right now, and I'm just gonna try and not think about all the stuff I still have to do when I get to Houston. It all overwhelms me. My mom gave me money for a hotel that'll last me a little bit. And I have to make sure I lose the weight Dr. Now says I have to lose before my appointment in a month. But right now, I just need to rest. And then when I get to Houston, I'll worry about it and figure it all out. I haven't flown since I was like 11, but how mad are you guys if you have to like be in the seat next to her? I'm guessing they had her pay for two, maybe three seats. I didn't fly because that would have been friggin' expensive. Screw that, I'll drive. Somehow. Let's go, Shauna. I've been here in Houston for a month now. I've mostly just stayed in my hotel room the whole time and haven't seen anybody since I don't know anybody here. The only time I go out is to walk around the hotel for exercise or walk my dog. But other than that, I don't have a car or a lot of money. So I've just been putting my focus on dieting and I've worked really hard on Dr. Now's diet. And I'm hoping it's been enough because I've changed my whole life to do this. Bro, this is the first 600 pound furry I've seen. Like, I joke about furries a lot, but usually they're not on the show. Also, I'm surprised she didn't lose the directions to friggin' Dr. Now's office. I still haven't found a place to live because all my energy is going into what I need to get my weight down to the goal I'm supposed to have. So I'm hoping that I finally lost some weight and did it this time. Hope so too. Shauna? On my last weigh-in, I was 658. And the goal I have now from Dr. Now is to lose 50 pounds. You better pray you lost that 50, because mama's money's gonna run out pretty damn soon. So my weight number needs to be down to 608 to be at my goal. Hey, that's progress. I never lost any type of weight like that before. So I feel really good. Really, really good. That's great. I'm so proud of myself. I doubted myself a lot, but I tried my hardest this past month, even though I was on my own. So it feels really good to see my progress in what I did. So I hope this shows Dr. Now what he wants to see. And then he's- I'm telling you, at that size, you beat yourself more than like the weight itself beats you. But mentally, you'll check out and you'll just stop trying. It seems like the cure to that was to put her in a totally different state and make her sit there without anybody else to give her food, and that's just how that worked out, so. Thinks I'm ready for surgery now. Hey, Shannon. Hi. How are you? Good, how are you? All right, it's been a while since I've seen you, so how you been? I've been better. Uh, what do you mean, better? better? Explain to me. Um, I've been struggling a lot. Would you move down here? Yeah. So are you living down here now? Yes, sir. So where are you living now? 
I'm looking for a place. There's a couple of options. You're living in a hotel then? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, I'm glad you're down here. Are you able to manage everything yourself? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, tell me about what's going on with your weight, because you lost some weight and since last time I saw you, which is good, but your progress is nowhere near where it should be if you were actually doing the diet like you need. It's been eight months since you first came down to see me and get help. And in that time, you only lost 35 pounds, which is not a lot. Yeah. So you still have a lot to show me to convince me you're ready to do this. I don't think she expected that. I think she expected a pat on the back, like, good job. And you did do a good job. You finally made some effort. But at the same time, like, they want you to lose way more than that. My surgeon wouldn't touch me at that size. He said you had to at least be under 550. I think he did mine at about 540, to be honest. And I would normally say at this point that I'm not sure there is any more we can do for you. But because I see you trying a little right now, I'm willing to give you two more months to show me you can lose 80 pounds, okay? Okay, thank you. But I want you to start therapy to see if they can help you start to wake up and do what you need and to help motivate you to start making better choices and take responsibility for your situation before things get worse for you, okay? Okay. And then in two months, I want you to lose 80 pounds, okay? Yes, sir. But you're running out of chances, Shana, so it's time to do better. Yes, sir. You still have the diet, right? I do. Okay, I'll give you another just in case. And I'll also give you another <laughs> copy of the exercises. And you... The doctor now is so used to her losing that sucker, he's like, I'll throw an extra one in your bag. But no more moon pies, you werewolf. And start doing your exercises, too. And try to do some exercise on a daily basis, okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Any questions? No, sir. All right, and so we have a lot of work to do to get you on a track and get you to understand what to do with that too, okay? Yes, sir. All right, well, I'm glad to see you back down here. Uh, I thought you'll never make it down here, but uh, I'm glad you finally did, okay? Yes, sir. All right, I'll see you later. Thank you. I'm glad to see Shana had some weight loss in this time and that she's moved down here to Houston since she lost her support system back home. But her progress is still far away from where it should be, so she's still nowhere close to showing me that she's ready for any big step like weight loss surgery. But now that she's here in Houston, we'll start her going to psychotherapy to see if they can help work with her to help get her more motivated to start taking responsibility for her situation before she I'm surprised Dr. Now didn't start there, but I don't think anybody abandoned her. I think they were there for her. They just couldn't keep doing it without her putting forth any of the effort they needed to see. She gets any worse and ends up in a situation where we are out of options with her and unable to help her anymore because she could very easily and very quickly end up in that place if she doesn't start doing more of what she needs soon. I'm a little disappointed and sad. The doctor now didn't seem prouder of me like I was hoping, and that he still wants me to show him more before I can get surgery. But seeing what I'm capable of today makes me want to make even more progress. So That's I'll good. keep working hard to show him I can do even better next time. And finally get my weight loss surgery. You definitely want to take a positive and keep building on it. I'm going to the therapy doctor now set up. That's supposed to help me lose more weight, even though I lost a lot last time. But I've had a lot of therapy in my life in the hospitals. So Damn. I think I kind of know what to expect. Usually it's good because I feel like every time I get therapy, I get something helpful out of it. But it's still not an easy process. And there are things- Those sandals are holding on for dear life. And one, and two, three. You need an extra two, three inches on that sucker. Things I don't want to talk about. Because I don't need to, and if I have to, it just upsets me. But we'll just see how it goes, I guess. Are you Shauna? Hi. I'm Dr. Paradise. Come on in. Oh, I'm not the hot <laughs> Have a seat on the couch over here. Have a seat. Hi there. So Damn. welcome. Thank you. I'm glad you made it in. Uh, tell me a little bit about yourself. 
What was your childhood like? With my mom, it was really good. With my dad, not so good. Okay, tell me about your, your history with your mom and your dad. They were together when you were born? Oh, when I was born, yes, until okay. I was four. Do you know what uh, pulled your parents apart? Um, my dad's Okay. And you, him you... and her just not getting along. Yeah, but you were so much better off without your father. I, I understand that that kind of traumatized you going forward, but no child deserves any of that from somebody that's supposed to care for them. Also, I was saying damn, because I didn't realize how tiny Dr. Paradise is. He's a little tiny slice of paradise, all right. Do you know if he was a b to you? Oh, he was. Really mental and physically sometimes. So let's talk about the, the mental part. Did he made fun of you? He said mean things? Because my wings. He made fun of my weight a lot. So your dad gave you a hard time about that? Yeah. You know, one of the things that happens, especially when a young person is abused, yeah. is they tend to think it's their fault. My guess is, did you think you deserved it because you were overweight? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Does he ever apologize? No, your dad was just a weak, insecure man who took it out on a child. No man should ever do that. Nobody was ever super negative to me about my weight when I was younger. Obviously, my parents offered me all kinds of stuff. They offered me like incentives, like, hey, Sean, drop 50 pounds, we'll give you 300 bucks. Needless to say, I never got that damn money. Apologize to you? Not really. Okay. How are you feeling right now? Like, I just don't want to talk anymore. Oh. Yeah, and, and doing this, can, it, it's a little bit like, a, getting a deep tissue massage. We're like working through knots and it's gonna hurt. But the idea is afterwards, you're gonna be able to move more. So it's normal, but I, I think you're protected against some of this stuff. But when we push through it, it's gonna give you access to, to stuff that you didn't have before. What kind of kinky massage parlor stuff is this guy talking about? Dr. Paradise is gonna give you some deep tissue. I thought we were in frickin' therapy here. Four. I don't know how bad I know. I just wanna go eat like a giant frickin' pizza right now. That's what you feel like doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, honestly. Okay. But you gotta stand on the eating plan if you're gonna stay in the program and reach the next level, which is having the surgery, right? Yeah. So you should be doing everything you can to stay on the diet. So let's come up with a different strategy. What could you do? I have no idea. You could take a walk. If you were home, you could do some of your exercise with your weights and stuff, right? So you could do something physical. What do you enjoy doing? I like swimming. So that could Pizza. be a goal, is to figure out some place to go swimming. Yeah. Yeah. And then the last thing, and this is your least favorite, is the long-term stuff. I think it would help you to keep talking about relationship with your family and the emotional eating to get at that so that we can rewrite your understanding of that so that you're not so vulnerable to it. I don't know how I feel about that because I thought therapy was going to be great for her, but seeing how much she shut down and just doesn't want to hear it, maybe they have to work through some barriers. I don't know. I've been in therapy like a couple times in my life. Once when I was a child, they put me in anger management therapy for threatening a kid in the school and chasing him out of it. Or no, no, they put me in that for me threatening to shank somebody over AIM, I think. But I don't know, they made me go there. I convinced them my mom was the fault or the problem. And she said, you're never going here again, you little sucker. And then I wasn't in it anymore. Yeah. Okay. Sure. You feeling okay about what we talked about? Yeah. Okay. So Sean, I need you to keep taking care of yourself. Staying physically active, staying on the diet. It's all gonna go together. Okay. Thank you. I can't wait yep. to hear how well you're doing. Let's go. Like There's a lot that I feel bad about and stuff that hurt me that I don't want to think about. And dealing with the hard stuff ends up making me want to eat even more. No, that's not where we're going, Shauna. We're going to diet away the demons. Come on. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Don't a motel. Since seeing Dr. Paradise and talking to him, 
I've tried to push myself to work on things, like he said I should. But I don't think I'm making much progress with it like he wants. Because I feel like I'm struggling even more right now. Because when things come in my mind that I don't want in my mind, then I try to use something that's not food to deal with it. Afterwards, it's like it's worse. And the cravings are stronger. Kind of like my cravings punish me for trying that. So like I start to think about things my dad has said to me. I'll try to go for a walk to forget. Well, that's good. She's finding some healthy outlets, but you could have took the puppers with you. I mean, God, you've got down puppy pads, but that dog definitely has to go to the bathroom. But then after that, all I really want to do is eat as much as I can. And the snack station here at the hotel lets you get things and charge them to the room. So that oh, place shit. has become my biggest temptation. No. But I'm trying to find ways to no. cope that aren't eating, but... Resist! Resist the rocky road relaxation! Don't do it, Shauna! Damn it, what are we doing? This is just hard. Oh, and part of me wishes I didn't start this process. Because I feel like it's kind of just blowing up in my face. Uh-oh. It's time for me to go back to doctor now to see how I did with my weight loss. I'm hoping I at least did as well as last time. I was really proud of myself for losing that much, even though I- Uh, I don't think the Chubb Castle is going to be very friendly to the ice cream princess who just was sitting there. Oh my god. This is going to be an epic car crash. Keep watching. No doctor now wanted me to lose more, but it's been harder this time with the therapy stuff and I lost the diet again. So I'm doing it all off memory for the past few weeks. Oh, suck up. And I'm really hoping Dr. Now starts to see how hard I'm trying. Because I really want this, and I need it too. Her feet aren't as swollen. Uh-oh. That's disappointing. I don't know what happened, so for that I think it was- <laughs> Oh, silly me, I don't know what happened. The friggin' snack bar happened, lady. Shauna, what are you doing? Damn it. Damn it, I t I'm talking about building on positive. She's over here friggin' pounding pints, man. I pushing myself to try and find other ways to cope with things. So I knew this would happen and I'm frustrated. Because I feel like I was going in a good direction. And all that got messed up. And now, Dr. Now isn't going to be happy with me again. Yep. So this appointment probably won't go well. You think? Hey, Shana. Hi. Get her. How are you? Good, how are you? All right, so how are you getting along? Good. Okay, well, you gained 13 pounds this time, so how's your eating habit come along? Um, I found some more different ways to, like, I found some, like, mixtures of food that I like from your diet, you know? Yeah, and they're called gaining weight. What are you talking about? Mixtures of food? You're eating freaking ice cream and Funyuns. What in the delusional hell is going on here? Like, um... Tuna wrapped in lettuce. Mm-hmm. It's really good. Well, I'm With sure it cream. is. But the issue is that's not the only kind of food you've been eating the past two months because you gained. So do you feel psychotherapy help you at all? Um, yeah, I guess. You guess? Yeah. Then why do you think you did worse this time than last time? Um, I don't know. Do you still have... It's all the damn mercury in that tuna, Doctor. Now all that <laughs> metal weighing her down. The diet, or did you lose it again? Honestly, I lost it again. Are you serious? Yes, sir. So we need to give you another copy. Could you? We give you another copy and read it. Yes, sir. At this point, <laughs> I doubt that because this will be the fourth copy we're giving you. What about your exercises? So you need another copy of those too. Yes, sir. All right. Have you had any activity over the last two months? What's that? Hmm? Uh, Did she say, what's that? 
Oh my God. I'm telling you, Dr. Now, smoke signal, she'll see that sooner than she'll read that damn paper. Activity? Mm-hmm. Um. You doing any walking, exercising? I walked the hallways a little, yeah. Okay, so what do you do all day? Um, play with my dog in the room, really. You and your dog, huh? Yeah. So, no exercise? Um, took her out sometimes. So I, walked, I walk her out, and then I walk her back in. The best I can tell you at this point, Shana, is to keep working with psychotherapy. So keep going to that. And I'm going to give you those papers again. But make sure you hold on to the information we've given you this time and follow the diet and exercises and lose 80 pounds over the next two months. So I'm going to get you the stuff and you should be able to lose um, at least 10 pounds a week. And this is uh, something that you're going to have to try to eat healthy, okay? Yes, sir. At first, I was just sitting here thinking, man, like, this is crazy. She keeps doing this over and over, expecting a different result. But now I'm just starting to think more and more that she's just mentally stunted. She's not mature enough to stick to the diet or do any of that. I'm not trying to give her an out, but something about her is just screaming. She's way too childish to understand the gravity of what's going on. Uh, I like tunas and le tuna and lettuce. I like this. Uh, sometimes I walk my dog. It's just, it sounds like you're talking to a kid, not an adult. But if you don't do what you need this time, I think it will be clear that you're not really interested in doing this. Instead, you want someone else to do all the work for you. And if you get to that point, then that'll be it for you. You won't be doing my program or getting great heart surgery. You understand that? Yes, sir. All right. Any other questions? No, sir. All right, Sean. Try to do better with your diet and lose some weight. And if you have anything you need, give us a call. And then we'll see how you're doing. Okay? Yes, sir. All right. At this point, I'm not sure what more we can do for Shauna. I think the concerns I've had from the beginning with her, that she's not really the one who wants to do this, and that her motivation to try and get weight loss surgery may be to make her mom happy, are the primary issues we are dealing with with her. And there is also a level of immaturity we have with her. Where she Definitely. I, I mean, the problem is she doesn't want it for herself, man. She's sitting there, Everybody else told her she's supposed to lose weight, but I don't think she got the memo because she's sneaking so many snacks. It's just insane. She expects someone else to come in and clean up the mess of her life for her instead of making the choices she needs to put in the hard work to take responsibility for her life. But we are giving her every tool and chance we can to help her do this. And hopefully psychotherapy will start to get through to her soon to help her start making the choices she needs now, before it's too late. I'll try harder, but I'm frustrated because I don't feel like this is my fault. I think the therapy messed me up some. I'm, not, I'm so scared I'm gonna fail and mess this up. And it's terrifying to hear Dr. Now say I only have one chance left. Dr. Paradise didn't pound any pints down your gullet. Like, that had nothing to do with him. I don't see how you're blaming him. But I think if you talk to her about anything rough, she's just going to shut down. That's her defense technique. Just shut down when things get tough. And that's kind of sad to see. Because without this, I'm doomed. I'm going to die soon. Doomed to the diabetes. Puppy pints. Since my last appointment with Doctor Now, I've been trying to do better. I had another session with Doctor Paradise, and I told him I don't want to talk about a lot of things. And I feel like if I have to do that, it just makes it worse for me. So for now, he says we'll focus on small steps. And one of the other things he reminded me of is focusing on keeping a clean environment that's in order if I want my life to be in order. Makes sense. So I've been doing a lot of cleaning, but I feel like a lot of times doing that, I start to worry about staying distracted. 
and then I almost start to panic. What's it? Isn't it like cluttered house, cluttered mind? I get that. Because when everything gets all messy around you, everything feels all messy in your life, so. And that all makes me struggle and want to eat even more. So this isn't easy, but I'm trying really hard. But I'm keeping Dr. Nas diet with me so I don't lose it. To make sure I'm doing what I can to only eat what's on it. And I just need everything I'm doing to be enough. Shove that sucker in your friggin' bra or something. Actually, she's not wearing a bra, is she? Nobody does that, 600 pounds. I'm in Dr. Nas' office and I'm really nervous. Because what happens today will be big. Since Dr. Now told me, I'm pretty much out of chances. So I have to hit my goal today or else. Uh-oh. Shana? Pissed off Patty. I was at 636 last time. And my goal is still to lose 80 pounds. So I have to be at 556. Six thirty-seven. Son of a, we gained it all back and then some? Good God. What in the, oh my God. Now she I smiles. Oh. I guess it's a smirk. I'm just in shock and I don't know what to think. I know I haven't been doing a perfect job, but I don't know how I did worse than last time. I don't know what this means, but I'm scared Dr. Now is going to tell me I'm done. Oh, and yeah. it's just over for me. Do any of you think she just kind of self-sabotaged because she just wanted to go home? Because I think that's the easy way out. Continuing to fight and try to change things is definitely the hard way, but it's the more rewarding way. Just giving up and going home is way easier. Hey, Shana. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Okay, good. Well, it took like you gained almost double the weight you gained last time. So not only are you still headed in the wrong direction, you're going down the wrong path even faster now. So you tell me, why do you think you're gaining weight? I really don't know. I just, I don't really don't know. What do you mean, don't know? Could it be that you're overeating? Probably. So when are you going to change? Um, today? Turtle. Today. So what happened uh, last month? What happened a couple months ago? What happened last year? I'll tell you what happened. Rocky Road, take me home. <laughs> she ate a lot of Rocky Road freaking ice cream out of that snack bar. That's for damn sure. We keep saying the same thing, but uh, we're not making any progress. Mm. Yeah. So, did you see um, Dr. Paradise again? Yeah. Yes, sir. Do you feel like psychotherapy is helping you at all? Yeah, actually, yeah. How? Um, I'm not sure. If you're not sure, then it's not really helping you yet. So, that's not good. And at this point, you're not making any progress, you're gaining your weight, and nothing we do is helping change that. So... We're not making any improvement with uh, anything with you. So with the BMI of almost uh, 100, and that's a very dangerous situation you have. We're going to hit the triple digits, and that's not a point to play around. Like, she's so young, I would love to see her turn it around right here. Because there's just a life full of misery and just a whole bunch of suffering from here if you don't turn this around. And you can't just shut down and pretend it's not happening to you, because it is. It's going to get worse and worse and worse, and nobody's going to be able to change it but you. I mean, I guess you could freaking strap her to the bed and funnel feed her or something, but I don't think that's even going to work out. But, Shana, here's the situation. You just turned 23 years old, right? I think Your that's BMI a crime. 100. 
and you don't have any support from your family uh, at all, and, and you have uh, depression, anxiety, and multiple issues that you need to take care of. I know it's very hard when you are alone, but you have to decide if you want to change your situation and live, or if you want to continue on this path you are on. And until you decide to start making the changes you need, then there is no reason for us to keep doing this. But we'll help you get some housing if you want some group home options. And we also keep providing you with psychotherapy. If you I don't know how she's made it this far. Like, she's got to be out of money by now. Like, Cricket's cash has got to be gone. There's no shot anything's left. Not to mention, she's going to that damn snack bar like crazy, and they're charging it to the room. So you better hope it's her mom's credit card on there, or else she... Oh, her mom is going to be pissed when she gets that bill. Oh, buddy. I mean, to keep going to that. And if you need anything, you can call me. But otherwise, nothing we're doing is working. And we are out of options with nowhere to go with you. But if you start taking the initiative you need and start making the right changes and lose at least 50 pounds, then we'll pick back up with you. Okay? Okay. All right. I hope to see you start to take some initiative and do this at some point. And before then, if you need anything, give me a call. Okay. Okay. At this point, we've given Shauna a year to start doing what she needs. And show me she's ready to turn her life around. But she hasn't done that. And there is no reason for that other than she doesn't really want to. Because she I mean, this is just a painful watch at this point. She's just kind of struggling and struggling. It seems like you're talking to a toddler at this point. Should it, oh man, this is sad. Real sad. She ultimately hopes someone will come do it for her. But with how fast she's gaining and how high her weight already is, we have a very serious situation with her. Because if it gets to a point where she loses her mobility, her lifespan will start to decline rapidly. So we'll keep working to try to get through to her. And I think the best and only thing to do right now is to focus on psychotherapy and we'll continue to provide that for her in the hope that they'll be able to start making some progress with her. Other than that, there is not much more we can do for her. And we won't be moving ahead or considering any next step with her until she starts to show me she's making some real progress with her weight loss, like she needs. But if at any point she's ready to do what she needs, we will be here for her, waiting to help her and support her however we can. Shauna's success is only going to depend on Shauna. I... I mean, you can't keep losing the damn diet plan, that's for sure. And you can't think that anybody else is going to do it for you. This is your time to take control of your life. Instead of just sitting here and thinking that everyone else is supposed to do it for you. Also, why does she keep licking her damn lips? Is there something left over there? Like, I've been wondering that this whole time. I don't think I still feel numb. And it's like my brain's still not registering all this. I just need some time to think. And just trying to process this. To figure this out and what I'm gonna do. <clears throat> At my last appointment, I was pretty disappointed in myself and how I messed up. But I've had some time to process. And I talked to Dr. Now again and I asked him if there's anything else I can do to keep trying to do his program. And he told me if I committed to doing the psychotherapy like twice a month, for six months, then I could try again. And I told him I'm willing to do that. And I want to try and figure this out. Because I'm not going to let myself fail. And I plan to do everything I can to keep moving forward. And I'm taking a big step towards that today by getting some long-term housing here in Houston. I'm surprised she didn't just tuck her tail and run home because that's the way I thought she was going to go. I thought she was just going to be like, all right, they said no, peace out, I'm out of here. But at least she's struggling and trying for herself. That means that she wants better. I don't think it just comprehends what she has to do or how she's going to do it. But I'm, like, I'm hopeful for her. Even though she keeps losing the damn diet plan, this chick is misplacing everything here. So. Hi. Hi. 
So I'm gonna take you over here where we can sit down. You can start filling it out, okay? Okay. I thought about the group home idea Dr. Now said, but I think living on my own is what I need. So I found a financially assisted place that I'll be able to afford. And if you have any questions, we'll be here to help you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. And I'm really excited about it because it feels like I'm getting a little bit more control over my life. And I also asked Dr. Now for some help with exercise programs. And I told him how much I love pools. So he set me up to start doing pool aerobics. And I'm so excited about that. What Dr. Now told me was a big wake-up call. Losing this chance means losing everything. And I know no one is going to come help me and save me. Nobody will but you, but also at least she's making some kind of effort. Uh, Tinder cardio, that's a good one. You're alone in Houston, there's plenty of guys out there, honey bun humpers in force, like just that, that's probably a good way to burn some calories. I have to do it and make the choices I need, and I'm ready to start doing that now. So I'm gonna do the therapy and work hard on everything Dr. Paradise tells me to work on, and keep doing the exercises and diet. And then in six months, my hope and plan is to tell Dr. Now, I think I'm ready to see where I'm at. And if I made the progress I need to be back on his program, because I'm ready to have my life. No matter how hard it gets or how much I struggle, I'm not gonna give up and lose this chance. It took a while, but I finally feel like I'm ready to change and take responsibility for my life and get what I want. And I'm not letting anything discourage me or stop me until I do. Well, that's good. At least she finally made some positive changes at the very end. The thing is, is you're going to get in your way plenty of times. You're going to fall down over and over. The good thing about that is you're not defined by your failures. You're defined by how many times you get back up and keep trying. I fell down over and over. I'm still working my way through this. I've got 48 pounds to go. But, you know, it's the, pro it's the process. You just keep working and keep working and eventually you'll get somewhere. But don't ever defeat yourself before you even try. Shauna was one of those people that's just sitting there thinking like, I can't do this, I can't do this, when she needed to have a little bit more of a positive mindset. But at least she started working at the very end. But all right, guys, uh, I appreciate all the support I've been getting on these lately. I'm about to hit like 50,000 subscribers, and uh, that's kind of mind blown to me. But if you could follow my Twitter and Instagram, it's going to be linked in the description, and uh, like and comment. Alright, thanks guys. Later. Peace.